Welcome back to the Nutri Medical Report, and we have a surprise and a treat. We have Professor James McKinney. Professor McKinney, uh, we want to have you to continue in, in the next hour as well. But uh, in this hour, let's talk about health issues. You're the master of plasma physics, and the body is a plasma physical object. And we talked about this in some of the other shows. I'm writing a book called Quantum Functional Medicine, and uh, uh, and let's just look at what a, a living organism is. It, living organisms require water. Water is an informational superconductor. In any tissue, if you have radioisotopes like Fukushima, it ba basically they steal electrons, and the tissue becomes electron deficient, which means it's also acid. Acidic tissues build up toxins and stealth pathogens. They change the energetics of the mitochondria to go from aerobics, which is for every a glucose molecule, you get 32 ATP, you're down to 2 ATP for each glucose molecule because you go through the hexose monophosphate shunt, which is not very efficient. And uh, <clears throat> as a result, the uh, cell goes into anaerobic metabolism, which is less than 5% of the cellular energy. Uh, what happens is that they manifest abnormal proteins, the mitochondria start to fail, and the cell gets the, what's called a death signal, where you stop building and making new mitochondria. Uh, a lot of this plasma physics is never taught to doctors. They're not taught that the body uh, basically is, in a sense, a every cell in the body is like a liquid crystal microprocessor supercomputer, and that every cell is using what's called harmonic resonance to activate specific enzymes and DNA sections, and that harmonic resonance interprets the DNA almost like hierarchical computer code. I expressed this theory. 32 years ago to a panel of biophysicists at the University of Calgary and built uh, harmonic resonance uh, morphogenic field generating machines which I built with a government grant uh, two years ago working with a PhD uh, electrical engineer a physicist. So um, the plasma physics of the body also explains the plasma physics of Earth and our solar system. Everything you know, it says as above below. <clears throat> so uh, t let's, uh, tell us some of your theories about the physical body, and then it also deals with the body of our planet. We have to think of the Earth as a living thing. It is. And also our solar system, in a sense, because it's a plasma solar system and a plasma universe, in a sense, the solar system is alive. It's a system of plasma or transfer of energy, and so is the galaxy. These are not non-living, in a sense, things. There's a, there are organized systems of informational and energy transfer that often ties directly into the plasma physics. So. Tell us a little bit about your theory on uh, plasma physics of physical bodies. Well, the, the body is in constant communication with with uh, the central nervous system. These every cell in your body is hooked into your basically your backbone, and then these right. feed up into your uh, brain for control. And what happens with the vast majority of people, starting when they're actually young? Uh, they they will do certain things. Let, let's take a really simple example. A woman, uh, 18 years old, starts carrying her purse on her right side. She always carries it on her right side. Right. <laughs> this starts adjusting the signals in your body. In, in, in five years, you'll find that the, the back muscles have adjusted. They've bent the backbone. You're starting to get weak signals to the liver. And this is affecting her health, and she doesn't know that it's caused by her carrying the purse on the right side all the time. You know, yeah, in other words, so you're changing the, um, the body uh, works, and, or let's take a person who sits at a job. Uh, right. or, or the worst thing is you can take kids when they're, they're five years old or now three, you put them in a classroom, and they sit there <laughs> until they're 18 years old, and then if they go for advanced training, they sit more. Uh, you know, one of the worst things you can do to your body is sit there a lot. And so and yeah. we do it. I'm the, one of the worst culprits. But it's amazing what uh, we do to our bodies, and uh, which breaks down the communication in the body, and then we wonder why we're not feeling well. Uh, exactly. So the, the body is a tremendous communication network. And right. we do well, 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 very simple but very stupid things to uh, break down this communication. And so yeah. I understand the, exactly what you're doing. Right. You're so, for example, we use enzymes get to get their body we, to communicate again. Well, we get the body alkaline. The first two things we recommend right off the bat is Power C, plus, which is the only mixed mineral ascorbate, and Nutritrella, the only long acting alpha lipoic acid with biotin in the, in the world. And then we add Nutricomplete and other nutraceuticals like our mitocarnitine 
mitochondrial catalysts, CoQ10 Supreme, CoQ10 uh, Supreme Ubiquinol, which are the only non-polymerizing CoQ10s in the world also. We use that to increase energetics. We use things like acetylcarnitine and D-ribose to increase ATP and increase the redox of the cells and the electron density, which was what uh, Linus Pauling talked about. When we get people in an alkaline state, when we have remineralization with things like indiumes, 49 in the periodic table that acts as a chaperone, when we use detox technologies such as our non-acid wash zeolite, Keeler Max, uh, we removing xenotoxins like Nutri Defense and Xenoestrogen Detox, we use adjunctive energetic technologies like far and near infrared uh, therapies such as Lumen Photon, Soma Pulse, Metathera Pulse Magnetic Field Therapy, which is like a Tesla therapy. We now have a new technologies for diagnosis, like the QRMA that measure quantum resonant magnetic analysis, developed by Dr. Yu Zhang from Taiwan, who actually came to MIT for some years. And we have the Russian-based system developed over 34 years of collaborative research with American scientists called the 3D NLS that actually does this thermodynamics and body harmonic analysis right down to organs and specific cells and tissue organelles. So you can actually diagnose and even find primary and secondary tumors. You can see tissue imbalances because the bioelectric and the plasma uh, circuitry of the body is always abnormal first before the pathological changes set in. So the circuits actually determine the structure and the function of the tissue and even the enzyme activation. And that's why acupuncture works, that's why energetic technology works. A lot of those things have their physical presentation in scar tissue, interfascial adhesions, that's why deep massage is good, vibrous limb. That's why when people are under the stress of electromagnetic pollution like uh, smart meters and Wi-Fi networks and cell towers, what they're doing is there's frequencies that are similar to the frequencies by which cells communicate. They house non-thermal effects. They're not thermal, they're non-thermal effects by inducing specific enzymes like inducible nitric oxide, ornithine transcarbamylase, superoxidismutase 1, etc. Uh, good and bad, but usually bad. Uh, heavy metals like mercury, ballast, and lights actually have an effect in the same place in the periodic table as zinc metalloenzymes, so they block zinc metalloenzymes for making new DNA and RNA. So the plasma physics is prescient. It actually sets the stage for the secondary messengers or chemical. All the 98% of cellular communication is scalar, uh, is in a sense chromatic, it's basically infrared, uh, far near infrared spectra. It is it, it linked directly to electromagnetic and boson fields that transfer along the phenolic side groups of, of uh, the proline side groups of all the collagen in your body. So your body's collagen is actually the superhighway for the plasma body, if you want to call it. Uh, does that model make any sense? Well, uh, yeah. The, the, once again, uh, the the body is a complex uh, feedback system. Uh, let's let's talk about the yeah, process exactly. of feedback. <clears throat> Uh, right, feedback, and feedback, by the way, is, 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 is it's an intelligent system, too, is what you're saying. In other words, there's an intelligence to it, and aging and disease is actually a dysfunction, in a sense, in mathematical terms, of the plasma physics of disinformation, in a sense. Right, that's, that's a great term, uh, disinformation. It's uh, because the, the cells, if they reproduce once, okay, why not a million times? Well, yeah, and why do you die when you got good DNA when you're 90? Right, and and, uh, and and that's where the body aging comes in. That's why a person's face changes, or the the rest of their body changes. And then uh, a lot of people uh, uh, do things like, uh, say, drink alcohol, things like that, which break down that communication, that feedback process that that allows the cells to reproduce. A lot of people don't understand. They think that their bones were made, and, and once you're an adult, your bones are set in yeah, stone bone for bag, the rest yeah. of your life. And it's really the, the, the doctor bones sees change that too. every couple months. You actually yeah, turn fact, over every cell in your bones every couple months. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, I tell people that, that in terms of physical structure, everyone is a pre-adolescent. In other words, some of the oldest things in your body are neurons. But even though they used to say that you didn't build any new neurons when they've discovered now you have neurocytes, uh, your bones are rebuilt continuously, your GI tracts every four days, a lot of the cells are recycled. Uh, the plasma physics applies there in the next hour, we'll have you continue, Professor McCanny, and we're going to be joined with John and Ann. 
This is really important because what you're talking about, what I'm talking about in the body and what you're talking about in space and, and uh, our solar system, we're going to kind of connect the dots and you'll understand on this program, maybe we're for one of the first times why we have a separation of tier one and tier two science, why the medical profession just uh, destroyed Raymond Reif and would not proceed with the medical positive benefits of Tesla's uh, discoveries in terms of medical health and the dangers of electricity. And we've had experts on talking about that, but we're going to continue in hour two, and we're going to expand this to the solar system and what's going to happen next and why things are the way they are. With Professor McCanny, John Moore, and Ann Morrison. Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report. And one of the most popular hours of the week is the third hour on Fridays because we touch on things we say like the the uh, promo tagline of Star Trek. We go where no man or woman has gone before. We are seeking out new worlds and new life forms. We are literally going to the edge of our imaginations of where the universe goes. And uh, the fact is that uh, when you start to study real history, uh, people like Graham Hancock, who's talked about the fall of ancient civilizations. When you look at the evidence of things that I've received firsthand, having got security clearance at U.S. Space Command, I can tell you right now, uh, knowing firsthand that there is a tier one science world, that most uh, tenured professors in universities, most students, most Ph.D. people have no clue, and much of this information goes back not hundreds but thousands of years to ancient priesthoods, ancient documents, ancient relics that indicate our civilization was a much higher civilization and fell from from a much higher level due to a galactic and solar cataclysms. We talked a bit in the last hour with plasma physics, so we want to first hear from John Moore, his latest updates, and then Ann Morrison, she, we we're going to do an update on what happened in the Arkansas nuclear reactor, and then we're going to hear some comments from Professor McCanny and uh, tie it all together with some big history comments of why now and uh, what is really happening, what is really going on connecting the dots because you'll hear people that harp on just one issue like martial law or they'll harp on something like just Fukushima and why is nothing being done, it doesn't make sense. Unless you tie it all together, you won't understand that we don't really have a healthcare system at all. We don't even have in a sense, a proper religious system, because very few people are what call real, what are called Joshua Christians that are totally understand the nature of our universe and what we are as beings. Very few people understand the plasma physics of the body because the medical system is designed to keep you sick, just uh, like a, in a sense, keep the, the prey sick while they suck the lifeblood out of us and our finances. And the same with our geopolitical systems is to keep a gruel class and expand it so they can have absolute power like the ancient pharaohs and the kings of Mesoamerica. So, um, John, what's the latest in your updates? And then okay. we'll get Ann's well, report. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Uh, this is mainstream news, but I find it very alarming, and I regard this as the beginning of uh, Chinese colonization of, of uh, the United States. Uh, two locations. One is being called China City in Sullivan yep. County, New York. It's 600 acres, soon to be 2,000 acres. Now, 600 acres is basically a square mile. Right. More than 2,000 acres later on, that's more than three square miles, complete with a high school, a college, uh, housing, businesses, uh, even a casino. And over in uh, Michigan, in the state of Michigan, near Milan, Michigan, another China city uh, encompassing 200 acres, which is about a third of a, of a mile. Now, keep in mind, Washington, D.C. is only 10 square miles. So uh, right. this, is, this is a fairly substantial uh, piece of real estate in New York. Uh, more than three right. square miles they plan on developing. And this is typically what countries do when they colonize. They go in and establish their uh, footholds. Uh, we did this moving west. I was talking to my friend Tim Spencer this morning about the right. how right. when the Caucasians moved west, they established forts uh, where they could bring western uh, you know, Caucasian culture and business and so forth and be protected from the natives. And uh, I regard it, this is what the Chinese are doing in uh, New York and in yeah. Michigan, and of course, more than 200 
free trade zones, which are smaller versions of what we're just discussing. Yeah, the, the largest one is in Idaho, where it's 50 square miles, and these are autonomous areas where they're basically many of the laws of the land of the state they say are superseded by the, which is by the way right. illegal because the Tenth Amendment is not possible to do that. And we have an illegal governor of Idaho that actually collaborated with this trade zone, giant trade zone built in Idaho, saying it's going to be, quote, good for business. Well, don't uh, forget we have a, a German air base in uh, Texas, I believe it is, somewhere down southwest since about 1996. Well, uh, the first military well, yeah. base established in, in the United States since the War of 1812. i got a question for you. You're in the military. Uh, what's the largest air base in America? Oh, I, I don't know offhand. It's in New Mexico. I'll give, I'll give you a clue. It's in New Mexico. It's bigger than many states in the east, uh, eastern United States. And by the way, there's an entire contingent of the German and European Air Force there all the time. Well, the Germans do have their own air base uh, where they're flying their, their flag uh, down in the southwest. And yeah, exactly. It's been there since 1996. Well, um... Yeah, that's really concerning. Now, just a few other facts about this. I had an argument on Wednesday with uh, uh, Harley Schlanger because he said a difference of opinion. Uh, the LaRouche Foundation kind of takes the kind of the single track of chess playing that all we need to do is do good business with China and they'll be they'll behave. And I'm going to remember a number that's of thinking specific... thinking like an American, doctor. Yeah, and I'm going to explain how that's right. not correct. Firstly, number one, I know this firsthand because my sister married a man who has his family had moved to Canada were from Shenzhen which is just outside Bay, uh, uh, Hong Kong they were bankers and very wealthy people very intelligent people and uh, uh, they shot them all in the back of the head when the communist Chinese moved into that area Shenzhen and they his, literally my uh, sister's husband uh, her mother actually swam across uh, Kowloon Bay and, and survived by getting to Hong Kong now what people need to understand is my sister traveled as a journalist uh, for the Hong Kong Daily News and speaks three different dialects of Chinese more than actually her mother-in-law was born in China because she's a linguist and she traveled through really remote areas up into Mongolia and so on and the number of girls have been killed by the communist Chinese even before the 1979 one-child policy in the remote areas they just ignored it they just kind of you know figured the central governments you know tell them to go to to wherever the Chinese tell you to go not Hades or hell and the, and the fact is that there are considered anywhere from 26 to up to 100 million unregistered females in the mainly rural areas in China. In the large cities, especially since 1979, they have now somewhere in excess between 26 and 44 million. It's hard to get actual good numbers of men of marriageable age that can't get a wife unless they get them from Indonesia or Palestine. Those are the primary areas where they try to buy a wife and bring them into China. And what's happening is that China is on the verge of a revolution. <clears throat> they printed more money than the, uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve, which is neither U.S. nor Federal, it's the European banks, more money than the central banks of Europe, more money than the Japanese and the Abe government, and all of the governments on Earth, in five years, they printed more credit out of thin air. Number one, they're taking that money and they're buying up farms, they're buying up and setting railways, they're setting up hospital systems, they're putting in ports like the super ports along the Mexican border, they're building nuclear plants to sell power to America with low standards. Some of them, for example, near Ensenada, Mexico, they're actually sitting, are going to sit, according to the plans that I've heard, only 70 miles low south of, of uh, the Canadian, American uh, Mexican border and south of Tijuana, right on a fault line, okay? So the people need to be aware the Chinese are dangerous. And their elite are trying to crush their own people. They even have recipes of how to cook baby or fetus on their television. They have, uh, they basically treat most of their citizens like garbage, even if they're highly intelligent or well-educated. They, they say they're going to get rid of the one-child policy, which isn't exactly true either. Um, in the big cities because a lot of people basically are basically non-citizens. The Chinese do what's called multi-track. They do more than one thing. They get, have an aggressive military policy. They have a, 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 a incomprehensible criminal uh, economic policy of stealing patents and trying to say, well, if you want to come in and do business in our country, two and a half years ago they actually blocked uh, corporations from buying more than 50% of any company in China and bringing in technology. Then they said they want the licenses within five to seven years for all the technology. And then what they've done was companies like Bombardier of, of Quebec, Canada, that made the best, uh, if you want to call it, rail system for high-speed rail. 
they took that system and they did minor upgrades to it and then said it's now ours. So dealing with the Chinese Chinese is like dealing with very bad criminals. Uh, and they treat their own people like garbage. The, the global elite, 80% of the new billionaires on the planet are all PLA members. Hutchinson Wampoa, which owns the Freeport Bahamas largest container facility for receiving traffic on planet Earth, the largest facility. Uh, the other one that's being built is in Via Cardenas in South Mexico that will connect to the so-called Trans-Texas Corridor, which, by the way, is still being built in pieces, despite liars like Governor Perry and others that says not. Uh, we have the Chinese are taking over everywhere, including now they just consumed and took over complete control of all the oil out of Ecuador. So that gives you a little perspective on what we're dealing with here. And so people who aren't informed or people that try to snow Dr. Deagle or anybody that comes in this program like John, Ann, and Professor McCanny, be warned, you can't snow us. We're back in a moment with John, Ann, and Professor McCanny. I think that John, you sent this to Ann to get an opinion on what happened in Arkansas. What did you find? Uh, and you sent three emails today. Uh, and what, what did you find uh, in your review of that incident in Arkansas? Was it a big event? Was it a minor event? What happened? Well, it looked like there was a, uh, a power surge coming in from off site because oh, yeah. the transformer blew. And then, uh, you know, they use off site power to. Uh, to uh, run the plant, and then the plant generates electricity that they send out over high power lines. Yeah. So if you don't have local power off-site, then you don't have the nuclear reactor will shut down. And what happened was that there seems to have been a power surge, and uh, it came in, it blew out the transformer, so the there was a scram, and uh, it was an automatic scram by the reactor, and that was reactor number two. Now, that same reactor was down in March because a crane had fallen onto it. And uh, at that time, this one person killed and eight people injured. But then they were back up in April. And right now, <coughs> as near as I can tell, they're still down. Now, you know, they have to wait three days because of the xenon. And when they do a, a scram, uh, what they do is they insert the control rods. And this yeah, and what does the xenon do? Because you mentioned this before, so people will catch on. Xenon's generated by the scram, and if you, you retrain and reinsert the rods, you have problems. What kind of problems happen if you reinsert before you get rid of the xenon? You have Chernobyl. Right. Now, also, by the way, this is the xenon is a gas that doesn't degrade, and then when it gets to the upper atmosphere, it's a very major detoxicant for the ozone layer along with radioiodine-131, which degrades pretty fast, but xenon doesn't. And uh, these things, when they get the upper atmosphere, they destroy the ozone layer, so you get high energy UVB, C and D. A tans you, B burns you, C is cancer, which I call it cancer, C or kill, and D is death. So these are dangerous, and what's happening is Fukushima continues. It's chewing up the ozone layer. Right. Well, in this case, the xenon is, is made in the in the uh, fuel rods. Right. When the control rods are inserted, the xenon is created by the fuel rods. And the right. uh, xenon has a nine hour, let me turn down this, has a nine hour uh, half life. So you take right. nine hours, you multiply by four, that's 36 hours, that's a day and a half. And, and uh, so they Yeah, so it goes pretty quickly, it, yeah. Yeah, it has yeah. to cool down for at least 36 hours. Well, in this case, it's been more than 36 hours and they still don't have reactor two up. Oh, now, really? What, what do you think is happening? Uh, do you think it's more than, well, do you think they lost other equipment inside the containment? Because we know when a few keystrokes in Yuma, Arizona caused the power outage at San Onofre, 12 miles from where I live here in north side of Penland Marine Corps Base, we know what it did is it caused the uh, so-called non certified engineering changes to cause a leak in the steam turbine systems so they actually released a massive amount of radiation tritium strontium thorium all kinds of nasties were released from that reactor because yeah, my detector went up to... five times above normal 
five times, which is well into hazmat level. You can thank Mitsubishi for that. Yeah. Apparently they and they General Electric. Well, yeah, they were the over. They were the ones that requested the equipment. <laughs> Apparently, they had trouble converting from some of the English units to the metric units or whatever. <laughs> But in right. any case, no, I think what hap- what's happened is that the uh, transformer blew. Well, that took out the diesel generator. And the diesel generators, as John will tell you, are hard to replace. You don't just call up your local dis- distribution center and get a diesel generator. You have to order it from the factory, and it has to be shipped out. And also transformers. As John will tell you, transformers are very hard to replace. And if it blew out a transformer, it might be a while before they can replace that. And then they have to install yeah, it, of course, and all that. So I don't yeah. think so. But the reactor, two may be down for some time. They haven't said. <clears throat> exactly. Now, um, uh, you sent me a, cu- a couple of other things here as well. Uh, one of them was in remediation. I tell people a lot of the information that's published by the government on remediation is anywhere from 20 to 30 to 50 years out of date. Uh, like they're stockpiling potassium iodate for the population. Ten days of it, and you're going to get polyneuropathy, renal damage, and retinal uh, damage to your eyes. Um, it's very dangerous. Uh, radiation remediation means, firstly, HEPA, ma- HEPA filters in your furnace in your home, sealing your home off, making sure you have adequate filtered water and food uh, for a period of time when the radiation passes. You can get a data logging radiation detector you can hook up outside your home, run the USB cord into your computer and you can detect the radiation surge because I tell people unless you've moved beforehand or can move at right angles to the radiation plume you're just stupid to get on the freeways. You need to know it's coming and then get out of its way. The best thing to do is hunker down and try not to get on the freeways you're going to get into a mess. And yeah, time, distance and shielding. Uh, the exactly. Shielding yeah, so is cement. Uh, cement right, we have our radiation a radiation can include <coughs> the uh, Nutri Defense for immune support, Keeler Max, Nutritrella, Cell Detox Glutathione, Liquid Zeolite, uh, Mitochondrial Support from Nutriodine, Mitochondrial Catalyst, Mitocarnitine, CoQ10. What happens is the mitochondria are one of the first to fail. The, in you know they get superheat basically because they're already a danger of free radicals, and if you superheat the mitochondria, the cell gets what's called a death signal. And then the first thing that happens is your natural killer cells decrease their ability and you start getting sepsis and gangrene. Uh, right. It's very nasty. And uh, the, the, what happens is we're already probably getting what I call low-level chronic CNS, gastrointestinal, and blood uh, radiation toxic, toxicity. And if you get major surges, you're going to see it become more evident. In certain groups of the population, the unborn, the elderly, people with metabolic problems or pre-existing conditions like uh, autism or mental illness they're going to deteriorate further so we're going to this is literally what we call the zombie apocalypse because you disconnect when you increase low-grade radiation levels you disconnect the frontal lobes from the brain so right the other bad. thing that we the, i also sent you the hot warm and cold zones and uh, as a doc file and uh, what they'll do is if there's a nuclear event or a radiation event they'll set up zones they'll they'll oh, yes, set up yeah. a hot zone called exclusion and uh, yes. they'll they'll put a perimeter around that. Yeah, we talked about that on the show last week about the with FEMA back in March of 2001, and they were talking about setting a hot zone, but their hot zone may be three miles, where I say around the federal center in Denver, because we used that as a, an example, because we did war game simulations right at the federal center with the FBI and CDC and hazmat teams from Presbyterian St. Luke's and uh, uh, other big hospitals, the University Hospital of Colorado. People need to understand that these are very arbitrary a lot of times, and if you're closed off in these hot zones, you're not allowed to get out, and don't attempt to decontaminate either. The thing is, they, if you try to get out, you're an enemy combatant. They shoot to kill and put you in a body bag. That's what they do. That's right. So you have about oh, 30 to 45 minutes to get away from whatever the event is, and that means as soon as you hear of the event or you see the cloud, you get in your car and you get out of there. Or you right. travel by foot. Foot. You can you can walk uh, five miles in an hour. So you can get five miles away from it in an hour. And even well, if, what you you got, get it, if you carry a radiation detector, you can know which way is fifty is ninety degrees from the plume. Well, that's true. I, too. Yeah. I have to do is you got to know what direction. If the numbers are starting to kind of shoot up again, you're probably not walking at ninety degrees to the plume. <laughs> that's probably right. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, so you gives wanna, you an idea. if you're in the hot zone, you want to get to the warm zone. If you're in the warm zone, you want to get to the cold zone. 
And That's good information. Yeah. Let's hear from but Professor McCanny when we get back. We're, we're going to hear from Professor McCanny, and we'll hear something by corrupt. Come back. And we are going to hear from uh, Professor James McCanny. His website is jmccsci.com, jmccsci.com. And we have Ann Morrison and John Moore here as well to ask some great questions. Uh, Professor McCanny, let's roll back. We've, we've, one of the things that you've crystallized very clearly, probably more than anybody else, is not only the plasma universe model, which I think the ISON comment is a perfect demonstration, but the horrendous danger to the public and to the independent strong nations of the world of a, a, a wire, a firewall between tier one and tier two science. And uh, just like the mini series uh, or me mega series, uh, the Battlestar Galactica that went over many years, uh, I think that this has happened before. I think our human beings have done stupid things to crash civilization when there's galactic and solar events where nations should be working together to protect themselves and instead they're either fighting each other or the elite are sequestering information away from the public so that no one's prepared for the cataclysm when it comes. And the elite that are based on high technology are swept away quickly and their survivors are subsistence living on you know, marginal technology. Let's put it back to the Stone Age, literally. So well, they, um, they thrive on di discord. Let's put it that way. They have learned that there. And now these formulas are ancient. The formulas that are being used to control the public today. Uh, you know, to come into a country, put in uh, uh, worthless money, to begin charging interest, which was outlawed in all of the old ancient texts. Uh, to put the uh, to create enemies between countries, so they create a boogeyman over there, and we have to rise up here and fight them. And that country thinks that we're the boogeyman, and the central bankers loaning to both sides. Uh, discord, disarray, uh, terrorism, uh, the protection racket in the governments, all of this is age old. These are age old techniques in uh, controlling the public. So we're, we're seeing that, but, but uh, what uh, I've been concentrating on lately is the misinformation of what I call Tier 2 science. Uh, right. And it's staggering the amount of investment they are putting into this. Uh, let me just give a little example. Uh, when uh, I don't go to the American Geophysical Union meetings anymore because they're basically worthless, uh, but you see 17,000 scientists attending these for one week. They're credentialed. They come from universities or, or government-supported industry, all with, uh, with uh, credentials, with affiliations, and uh, lots of money backing them up in their projects. They're all, you know, in government-supported projects. But what you see is the vast amount of money that it takes to support this, to fly these scientists around. 17,000 scientists, they're all on the government dole or their foreign government dole, whatever it is. But none of them, not a single one of these people having a clue that there's an entire layer of science above them about which they know nothing. Uh, these people are there to provide phony, misguided science. And uh, this is staggering. Now, and so the public really is uh, completely unaware of this. So what I'm trying to do is make an effort to expose this. And uh, you know, you had some it's, good examples, uh, Professor McKinney, before the show. Yes. You had some good examples before the program of some uh, serendipitous contacts that showed that the CIA was spending literally billions to try to put disinfo to sideline your information to create enough uh, obfuscation of an issue that the people don't take the plasma model seriously, which will give us not only to tell us the dangers of things like comets and space weather and near Earth space objects, but also the opportunities of limitless energy. There's tell us about that because when you mentioned that this morning, I thought, wow, this is an important story that needs to get out to the public because you're not going to hear it on the regular media. It's just not going to get out there. Yeah, uh, this is something that we discovered recently, that there's a group of organizations that have been formed uh, through Europe, 
uh, branching to the United States. And basically, they're phony organizations. They started giving each other awards. They have impressive names. Uh, and uh, what you find is that the people on the awards panel that decide who gets the awards are the same people that get the awards. And they're calling these prestigious gold awards for international scientific achievement achievement and it's just a phony a series of phony organizations and the more they give out uh, awards the more uh, it looks like they are legitimate what they've done also is they've they've kind of flown a banner of openness and uh, uh, various uh, high moral type standards in the sciences as a banner for people to to support this so they've gone out and solicited literally hundreds of international credential scientists to join in this by putting their name on it but they don't understand that at the top of this you have a bunch of phony wannabes that are getting giving themselves prizes uh, for yes. international scientific achievement, and most of these people are not scientists. They don't have any scientific degrees. They've never worked in any sort of legitimate science in their lives. And this is yeah. when we look at the base of this that goes back down into the CIA, and uh, what they're trying to do is legitimize these people through phony organizations. Yeah. Uh, so and this you're, is you're just a forensic the investigator. You're a forensic investigator, John. When you hear this, this is so shocking. You, know, you have to be sitting down, as I say, have your trade table in the trade table in the upright and locked position. When you hear this kind of comment from a credentialed scientist that's respected, Professor McKinney, who's telling you that they're specifically attacking uh, his release of information because they want to keep it sequestered in Tier One science. When there's smoke, there's fire. Obviously, the globalists don't want us to know they have built giant underground quote hotels or underground facilities everywhere under off-world space platforms sequestered science to protect themselves from whatever's coming and by the way if you want to compare it you only need to stay underground for two weeks if it's a nuclear war what they're preparing for is much worse whether it's an ice age like the younger driest one 13,000 years ago or it's something worse like a gamma burst they're preparing for something very bad and uh, the fact is that the globalists don't give a rat's behind what happens to the general population. What's your analysis when you hear this from Professor McKinney? Because this new revelation, I think, is relatively... Right. Well, I, I've yeah, had time to think about this since I first heard about this two days ago. Uh, we're dealing with uh, very well-organized, very well-financed, uh, very bright people who have, have a plan, that are, and they're following their plan uh, to the T to uh, accomplish their goals of orchestration of, of disinformation at a level that will convince almost everybody who doesn't have the kind of credentials Professor McCann has, convince almost everybody of the veracity of what they're doing being truthful. And, uh, and for the most part, they'll be 98% successful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and of course the whole education process is to beat out of people the idea of thinking out of the box or looking for new pattern recognition or paradigms. The educational system is not designed like uh, Nikola Tesla would say, or uh, uh, you know, the ancient philosophers like Aristotle or Leonardo da Vinci that says his most important goal was to teach people to ask better questions. Uh, no, the goal of the education system is to make sure you don't ask questions. You know, <laughs> well, reading, writing, and arithmetic, the the fourth R reasoning uh, has been left out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's, that's that's a good one. So in, in place of reasoning, I think they have regurgitation. And yep. um, that's, yeah. that's what gets you an A, that's what gets you a Ph.D., that's okay. what gets you a government job, and that's what gets you a, a retirement pension if you just keep your mouth shut. I, I'm going to use the, the KISS principle here and just throw out the things that are most likely. We've had over the years Robert Felix on talking about Ice Age now. <clears throat> We've, I've researched the issues of, of uh, uh, Graham Hancock's work on the ancient civilization that crashed Somewhere around the last crash was about 13,000 years ago during the Younger Dryas period, where he postulates that there was a bro broken comet that passed Earth. Probably not an impact, but at least caused major uh, geotectonic and plasma effects that caused dust and volcanism to cause a thousand year ice age. And once it gets rocking and rolling, it doesn't take long for that ice sheet to come all the way down to the central United States, all the way to the Missouri River. People don't realize that an ice fall was on the north side of the Missouri and the south side was basically five degrees cooler than normal but otherwise 
intact uh, during the ice fall. And that ice fall was over, I think, 1,000, 2,000 feet of ice. Back in a moment with more from Professor McKinney, John Moore, and Ann Morrison. Welcome back. Um, and you had a couple of comments uh, with Professor McKinney and Professor McKinney. I guess the way we have to connect the dots here is that you've said this repeatedly and you've got really good evidence for it, is that the globalists are planning to survive and want to reduce the population. The genocide is happening because nobody's doing anything about Fukushima. If there was something positive to be used, like for example, you wouldn't use Corex at 9500 in, in the Macondo drill site in the Gulf of Mexico. There are other divisions of our U.S. military use non-toxic equivalents that wouldn't cause this. The experts from Europe that were going to come in and help clean up the, the mess there that destroyed the loop current, those experts said, uh, you don't have to use Corexit. We can remove this oil and get it out of there and all the toxins without the danger of Corexit, which is destroying shrimp and taking their eyes out of their head and causing birth defects and doing lots of other things. Uh, I, I think they're on a rampage, and I, I really think that 2014, the opportunity is we could have Glass-Steagall, we could remove Obama, we could get control of Fukushima by moving our military and our top experts around the world to control this mess. Uh, the downside is I, I just generally find that human beings don't marshal their efforts until they're too far gone, and people aren't going to pay attention until things are so awful whether you're heading into an ice age or north america's food is radioactive because fukushima is not solved in say two three or five years uh that human beings won't believe it until they can't have a normal child and the child's coming up with say you know cyclops or serious mental retardation or all kinds of birth defects people aren't going to get it are they that's my general impression go ahead professor yeah yeah professor mckinney what do you uh, think well uh, Dr. Bill, you have a, a way of uh, putting these uh, all of these issues together. Um, oh, yeah, I'm trying to put them together so because we get geniuses like yourself and, and investigative journalists like John and scientists like Ann, and we put all these tie all these pieces together. It makes a very emotionally charged kind of uh, thing you can't just kind of dismiss because a lot of people like to dismiss us and say well you're just a nut or you're negative or you you're always trying to flog you know just frighten us no we we're trying to save civilization we want to have our neighbors prepped just like all the early settlers of america we want to have our our civilization aware that we do not have a u.s federal government we have a globalist government that's usurped power and taken over our federal government we have a tier one science that sequestered away to private corporations we even at the universities they recruit people from the universities to go into tier one science like they've done to me several times to go into tier one science uh, the, the last major time was in the, the late 1970s when i was recruited to actually work on a DARPA super soldier program when I was going to work on World MS Tissue Repository with Dr. Wallace Tortelot at UCLA in the VA hospital. So I got to tell you, uh, it's very, it makes me extremely angry when people think that this isn't a reality and it's going to put civilization in grave danger. What you're saying is probably one of the most important conclusions you can make as a scientist uh, in terms of how science ties in with the chance of survival of society and just how desperate the government is and the globalists are to make sure that we remain stupid and won't ask the questions or we continue being persecuted by pseudo bloggers, pseudo news broadcasters, pseudo uh, TV broadcasters, pseudo you know regular we call media or I call it the mediums of the media. Uh, or, or, or like, for example, with space weather or space science of any yeah, kind, was, uh, it's homogenized space in your head. and blended, and these go through filters, final filters, before anything reaches the public, and you see them repeating over and over certain catchphrases, and then right. they're just trying to pound this into the public, uh, like well, the, little icy wander in, in regarding a snowball. I mean, how many yeah, well, hundreds of different ways can they say that, but they have to continually repeat it like like uh, almost like a first grader how would yeah, you repeat, uh, a first grader to remember you know the uh, allegiance to the flag exactly. or the uh, or a prayer or whatever you repeat it and repeat it and if the uh, you know and, and the people 
continue to do this. Uh, let's look at how they look at comets. We just had Comet Ice on. What was the coverage of Comet Ice on? They showed a white tail in amateur pictures, and they only talked about the white tail. When it sprouted wings, they go, well, comets are complex. We sure have a lot to learn, but they're still these dirty little snowballs. You know? mm, yeah, it was, like it was, the you mentioned this morning. coverage <laughs> is so yeah. Mickey Mouse. It um, is. And they don't even tell you about the core. You mentioned that this morning that the core could be an all of the solid core. And there really is technically no difference between asteroids and comets. Now, here's how this all ties together. And, John, your uh, classified document you sent me from your sources in the government that we talked about last week and the week before, right. this is really important. Uh, to summarize, and we're not putting dates on this, uh, DHS has said by, by the spring of 2017, everyone in America will have an ID. Uh, biometric and by the way DHS doesn't have limits they can ask for iris scan DNA uh, body terror scan so they can hit you at 400 meters or driving in your car at 70 miles an hour on the freeway they don't just want to tag on your license plate they want to know who's driving uh, if you want to get secure access to a building you have to grow our supply of micro drop of blood and I've actually visited the building 10 facility in Oak Ridge Tennessee and the Chicago facility for Affymetrics where they make the bio DNA biochip so I can give you exquisite technical detail how they use bacterial endonucleases and microchip analysis using advanced scalar technology to actually analyze your DNA in five minutes from any other individual on Earth. And by 1999, they had the cost down to 42 cents per chip and could use it with a laptop. So when people try to dismiss what we're saying here, you're going to lose. In fact, uh, very few people are stupid enough to call into this program and disagree. Being disagreeable when you have facts this heavy literally tons and tons of glaring ugly facts what we have to do is face the music that we had, can come to a solution and we can be positive this is a, the time of the year when we are celebrating Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach his real birthday was probably in, in September his actual first birthday was September 11 3 BC that's his actual birthday and it's based on astronomical facts and the facts in the Bible that talked about him six months younger than John the Baptist but if you look at all these facts we have a globalist elite that want to enslave us, uh, use our biometrics like the mark of the beast to enslave us and control us, destroy all our wealth. Obama is there to deconstruct America, and it's not just America. It doesn't matter if it's Uganda or China or Russia or Ukraine where they had. Last night I was preempted in the second hour, went to the third hour that they tried a orange revolution, and the response by John Kerry is, the Ukrainian people deserve better. Come on, John Kerry, skull and bonesman, telling your wet dreams while you're masturbating in a coffin, half naked with your buddy George Bush at the Bonesman's uh, Lodge there on the campus of Yale University. This is sickening. And we've got to stop tolerating this kind of stuff, whether it's in universities or politics or religious systems. And a lot of these so-called religious leaders, scientific leaders, other people, they need to be dismissed. We are the news. They're the snooze. They put you to sleep, and they turn you into a zombie, a brainless golem, ready to be destroyed. Your comments, John and Ann. Well, Doctor, uh, our opposition is well organized, well financed. They have a plan, and they will carry out their plan outlined in the Georgia Guidestones to eliminate... Yeah. 90 percent of the people on this planet 95 percent of the people on this yeah. planet that's their yeah. goal and, and they are work doing everything they can to achieve it now one of the things that people expect and i'm saying it's the exact opposite that's going to happen yes they're trying to destroy the middle class but what they're going to do is they're going to open the spigot for credit once they get a biometric system and we're going to see not a period of economic catastrophe even though they're not controlling fukushima and even though we're eating radioactive food like they're going to serve to the japanese government radioactive rice grown in prefectures right around fukushima believe it or not but what they're going to do is they're going to open up that spigot at the same time they're increasing biometric control so they know where your car is and your car track and shut your car down because they don't want you to move they they'll know where your cell phone is to a cubic meter and they'll talk to chips that you've taken because you've taken what's called authentication pills ordered by Obamacare that you must authenticate to your cell phone that you've taken your medications. That's where this is all going. People say, no, Dr. Deagle, you're delusional. No, I'm not. Uh, you wish so. You wish that I was mentally ill. You wish I was crazy. No, I have a titanium alloy backbone and I have the spirit of the Most High God in me and so these fantastic people here on this program, they understand 
that this is the final battle for mankind. This is the final one. Uh, it's, uh, many of us are going to die in so many years, even if we have a natural life. But civilization, this is the final chance for human beings to break the bonds of evil. And it's only going to happen if we rise up and we ascend and take our scepters and be sons and daughters of the Most High. And if we throw off this bonds of things like Tier 1 and Tier 2 science and the lies that our government are making that they're taking care of us all right, or that they're teaching us or our kids, uh, all of it is lies. Your comments, Ann and Professor McCanny and John. Go ahead, Ann. Yeah, it's, I've always said if you don't have a scientifically astute public, you can push anything over on them because science teaches you how to think, how to reason, how to come to logical results. And yeah, it, it, if, it, if the most the science is given, uh, the most the public is given is, is pretty little pictures of a comet exactly. and, and a, an explanation that couldn't possibly be true. 